I'll give you five ways that land may be less attractive to you or could pose a real opportunity. Number one, water. So if you're looking at, let's just say two acres, it could be any size land, but let's just use two acres as an example. You may be looking at two acres that has no creek, no pond, no well. Number one, that land is less valuable because of its lack of water. So you may view it negatively. You might say, I'm going to pass on that property. Or you may view that as a property that you can buy more affordably that might be less competitive. And you can be the one that adds the water and put it right where you want, how you want. Do you want to put in a clay bottom pond? Do you want to put in a liner in a pond? Do you want to create a stream system for irrigation, for landscaping, for planting? Or do you want to put in a well? And what would the cost of that well be? Is it a cistern well or is it a deep water well? You got lots of options, but water matters. It can make a property less valuable and less attractive. It can also present an opportunity where you get to dictate how you access water. And then you're the one that has added value and made it more attractive to the potential next owner or just for your lifestyle while you own that house. Number two, trees. Trees matter. Shade matters. Beauty matters. Privacy matters. And trees are a big, big factor. Now, the type of tree, especially here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, is not as important for a lot of buyers, but there are some trees that are certainly more valuable than others. If you've got a grove of pecan trees, that's very, very popular. There are other trees that in some ways could even be considered invasive that maybe were not naturally here, like some bamboo. A lot of people will plant bamboo for privacy. They'll plant kind of some junk shrubs for privacy at the front of a property. Red tip fatinias are an example of that. Some people love them, but a lot of people do not like them. So a lot of trees is typically a good thing. Cleared land, previous cattle land, often on busier roads is really, really cheap. It's really, really affordable relative to other land cost. but I'd be very careful because it's going to take you years and years and years to retree a property like that, even with faster growing, less desirable varieties of trees. So not having trees is a value, but it might be an opportunity for you to buy something and dictate where those things go. But suffice it to say, no trees, cheaper, less desirable, more trees, lots of functionality, more desirable, more valuable. Number three, flood zone. Properties in a flood zone are almost always less desirable, certainly less competitive, and significantly less valuable. Let's say you have two acres, and an acre and a half of that land is in the flood zone. A lot of buyers will literally only value the half acre that is out of the flood zone. Some will value all two acres, but they'll value the half acre out of the flood zone at fair market value, and the acre and a half in the flood zone at maybe 30 or 40 or 50 percent of fair market value. This is one of the very unique ways that we have helped a lot of buyers buy some really cool land to build a home or home on land. Obviously, the area where your home is, you do not want that in a floodplain. A, you're going to have to pay expensive flood insurance. B, you run the risk of your home being flooded. In most areas, you cannot build in a flood zone. Now, you could go to the crazy time, energy, and expense of bringing a property out of a flood zone by adding soil, by raising the land. And people will often allow builders and developers to bring in clean fill dirt to raise that land up. That is a messy, slow, methodical, even potentially expensive process. But the other thing to think about is what is your primary use for that non-house space, right? So the house is on half an acre. The rest of it, if it was intended for recreation, playfulness, and you're in a 100-year flood zone, meaning it should only flood every hundred years, you might not care. You might really, really benefit for the lower valuation of the bulk of that land, but you don't have a need where the flood zone really infringes on that. So that's one way to think about it. Flood zone properties, typically less desirable, less competitive, but for your use might be a great way to get a great property at less cost. Number four, access. In realtor speak, this is ingress and egress, ingress and egress, inbound and outbound access. You have to be able to get in and out of your property, but there are quite a few, you know, many properties, even in DFW in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, where there is no direct private access to your property. You're landlocked. You bought the back part of someone else's property, or you bought a piece that was sold off years ago and has now got other owners fully on your perimeter, meaning you have to cross over someone else's property to access your own. Now, when that happens, 
those other property owners are required legally to give you ingress and egress, to give you access. But you do not own that land and you cannot control that land. You don't always get to determine how smooth and how level and how well that retains or moves water off of the road. It's not always your gate or your lock. So these properties are also a lot less desirable to most buyers. This is another way to potentially purchase property at a lower price or to be able to come at it from another angle, but you are gonna have a lot less control of the access, security, inbound and outbound access to a property like that. So this one is not a big winner for most people. Most people don't view that as a unique way to access property more affordably, but if you do, this is one where you may come out a big, big time winner on purchase price and on ongoing maintenance costs because you're not even necessarily participating in the cost of maintenance of that road. Often friendly neighbors do, but that's not a requirement. HOAs or deed restrictions, or maybe even like city or county code enforcement, most acreage properties don't have these items, but there are enough in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that I wanted to mention them, and really all across Texas. And these would be your communities where a developer has come in and said, we're going to have, we're going to buy 200 acres and break them into two acre, five acre, 10 acre lots. And it is more of a neighborhood. You definitely have distance from your neighbors you are spread out, but it is somewhat of an owner's association or deed restricted area. It might say, you know, you can't have manufactured housing or you can't have manufactured housing for more than six months, or you have to build between 1,800 and 3,800 square feet, or you have to build 100 feet off the road, some things like that. Many, many people, especially the type of people that typically buy homes on land, don't want any restrictions. So you might view that type of property as less attractive, less competitive, or less valuable. You might view it as a positive though, because oftentimes properties on land are around unrestricted neighbors that tend to put cars in the yard or run a business out front or not take care of their property the same way you do. And so you might view those restrictions as a positive because it's going to require your neighbors to meet those same restrictions that are generally intended to protect property value, safety, and the attractiveness, the aesthetic of the, the home, the neighborhood, the area. That's one more way you could look at a property as less valuable or less attractive, or you might spin that to your advantage. Five different ways that property, land, homes on land may be viewed as unattractive, unwanted, not competitive, that you could either be wise to avoid or be wise to look for as an opportunity to buy lower cost land or to have more control over how that land lays out and serves your needs for lifestyle, home, or potentially property value purposes. If this video was valuable to you, please like it, share it with a friend that it might help. And then if you want more videos on Homes on Land, subscribe to our channel, click that little bell. And when we make more videos, more updated videos, videos about more areas, you'll be notified and you can check that out. If you're thinking about making a move and buying a home on land in the Dallas Fort Worth area, we're brokers and agents. We'd love to earn your business and earn your trust. Our contact information is below. I'll see you on the next video.